In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Islam. On behalf of the Islamic Information Service, I would like to thank everyone who made this trip to Marbella, Spain possible. We are at the villa of the renowned scholar Mohammed Assad, Dar al Andalus. We are in the mountains of Mijas. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. It's so wonderful to see you. Oh, welcome here. <laughs> Thank My you. Pleasure. Thank you. Hi. The weather is variable in Spain. I, it's supposed to rain yes, this afternoon. But I hope it won't. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. Well, we're going to we're going to go through with this whether it rains or not. Yes. During the last few decades, several Islamic scholars have brought to the attention of the Muslims their state of apathy and their need to reconnect with Islam and its values. But few of them have had the impact of the renowned Muhammad Assad. His translation of the message of the Quran into English and several of his other books including The Road to Mecca, which is his own personal odyssey are widely read. We will explore today with him the many different subjects which he has written on and which are of interest to our many viewers. Mr. Assad, before you uh, came to Islam, what was your religious inclination? And did, did your view of God subsequently change? No, I had no religious inclination, precisely. Oh. And uh, I was originally Jew, but nominally only. And I did not like uh, the regulations and of Judaism and the insistence of men serving God. This is one thing. God does not need service as such. And the second thing is, was the exclusivity of the Jews. They think that the whole world, whole creation is for, made for their sake only. Whatever happens in the world is a result of their doings. If they behave well, so all rewards come from God, and, and if they behave badly, the world turns against them. So that displeased me, this egocentric, self-centered idea. But I had no religious inclination as such. And my approach to Islam was quite different. In your approach to Islam, what is your vision of God? What is your God concept? My concept of God is that God exists, and that I cannot understand Him, that I cannot comprehend Him, that He is infinite. My brain cannot operate with the concept of infinity or in time or in space, and I can have no uh, idea what God is and how he is, I only know that he is and that he is the creator, all-powerful and that embra he embraces everything in his knowledge. What was your transitional process from not believing to believing in God? To ah, believing? That, was, that was very strange, it was via the Arabs. I came when I was very young, I was 22 years old, I was invited by a relative of mine uh, to Palestine. And I lived for some months in Jerusalem. And f almost from the very beginning, I fell in love with Arabs. I liked their uh, way of approaching life, of doing things. I liked their way, how they spoke, and their openness and directness. And uh, later on, I was a journalist at that time, and I was traveling for years as a special correspondent of German and Swiss newspapers in the Middle East and farther east. And uh, gradually I became interested to know what the Arabs think, what are their ideas. My Arabic was very limited at that time, so I had to rely mostly on uh, writings in European languages which didn't satisfy me. But gradually, more and more, I came uh, accustomed to speak, and when I, especially when I traveled in Iran and Afghanistan, I spoke Persian already very fluently and could discuss things. Uh, in Afghanistan especially, I spoke with people who, are, who were 
deeply imbued with Islam and interested and talked with them and learned through talking with them more and more. Then finally when I returned to Europe after my second long trip after many years, 1926, I began to read seriously the Quran with a translation, German translation, because my Arabic, as I told you, was still insufficient. And my wife, my first wife, who was older than me and so, shared in these things with me. One day I was reading the Quran in a German translation and for some reason or other we had to go out. I think I described that in the road to Mecca, yes. this experience. When I became convinced suddenly that this book could not have been composed by a man who lived in Arabia uh, 13 or 1400 years ago, uh, who, was, uh, who did not know the outside world except a little bit of Syria and so, who did not read and write, it must have been inspired. But inspired by whom? Inspired by God. And it became like a flash. I became convinced that the Quran is the word of God. What, what German translation was that? Uh, that was, I think, by Rickert. I, I don't know exactly, or Henning, or something like that. The German trans there are several German translations, mm -hmm. none of them good, all uh, biased, of course. Uh, they are made by Orientalists, yes. and Orientalists, as you know, are descendants of missionaries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Orientalist science in the West was developed by missionaries in the Middle Ages in order to convert Muslims to Christianity. So they, they carry, Orientalists carry that weight with them to this day. They are improving gradually, but what I read in those days, 60 years ago, was not very good. But still it made quite an impression it on It made an impression on me because the text was there and not their concept of Islam impressed me, but what they reproduced. Mm -hmm. And what? especially the Surah Al-Hakum mm -hmm. Al-Takasru, that, that impressed me enormously because that is the picture of the world of today. Now, mm -hmm. in our days, this Takasur striving for more and more, uh, the uh, uh, lack of knowledge of what may happen later, and God's statement that you will see, you will find, you are in hell now. Uh, uh, you see, now you, if you would look at it, you would see that you are in hell. But one day you will see it with the eye of certainty. And on that day you will be asked, what did you do with the boon of life? This is... This gave me a shock, practically, and, and I, I, was, I was really physically shaking when I read this. The Quran, which was pronounced 1400 years ago, shows uh, the condition of society in our days. And that can, nobody could have predicted that. What was the difference when you learned the Quran in Arabic? And what changes did it make in your perception? No, there were no changes. There was a deepening only. And I say, when I started working on my translation of the Quran, the message of the Quran, I thought the work would take me two years. And it took me 17 years. My goodness. Because every day I discovered more layers and more layers and more layers, one above the other, one under the other. And I became convinced that I know 
less of the Quran than I knew before because I realized how much more is left which I don't understand yet, which I don't know. So this is, if I, every time I'm thinking of my work, of my translation and commentary, I say, oh my God, I would like to restart it and improve it and do it deeper. Perhaps one day I will. There is a science to commentary, to doing commentary. Yes, but you see, what I would like now is to uh, write a, uh, about consecutive meditations on the Quran, thinking on various parts of the Quran and trying to find this exactly these deeper layers which escape one at the first glance and at the second glance even. And if God gives me life, I will work on it. What about man's relationship to God and God's relationship to man? Man is God's creature, is utterly dependent on God and is nothing without God. God, on the other hand, is entirely independent, does not need man. God does not need anything. God does not need our prayers. God does not need even our uh, statement that he is one and unique. It is for our benefit that he asks us to realize these things, to, to pray and to uh, realize his oneness, not for his own sake, because he is in no need of anything. So... What about this oneness? The what? The oneness, the unity. Oneness. Oneness means that there is absolutely no reality apart from God, no deeper reality, that God embraces everything. That everything that exists or could potentially exist comes from God and is a result of God's will. So this unifies man with God and with nature this, with yes, the, the rest of creation? First it unifies God with man. It gives him inner peace also. It unifies men with men because they all are cogs of the same wheel. And uh, this is for our benefit that the Quran stresses from the beginning to the end that men must recognize the oneness of God. Is this a different kind of oneness than from other religions? I mean, Islam's concept of oneness, is this different? Of course, this is, uh, I don't know of any religion which stresses the uh, oneness in that sense. Now, for example, Judaism is also very monotheistic. It has the concept of oneness. Mm -hmm. But the concept of God by the Jews is mainly the God of the people of Israel. It is a remnant of a tribal concept of deity. While in Islam, uh, we are taught to understand as much as human brains can understand that God is everything, that everything that exists uh, in Allah, in a, uh, in a kulshe yarja in Allah, everything comes back. And this coming back has two meanings. One, that it returns to him after death, which is the destiny of every human being, every living being, and the other coming back in the uh, linguistic sense, uh, uh, coming back to its root of thought, you see. Uh, when I say, for example, this goes back uh, to Greek roots, mm -hmm. that means that it goes back logically in a chain until it uh, reaches uh, uh, its origin in Greek, in a Greek concept or so. And the Quran stresses that everything goes back to God as its source. God is the source of everything. What part of 